Well, good morning and welcome to Daily Prayer. Today is Thursday the 24th of November and I hope you're well. Thank you for joining me. As always, we use a form of prayer written by the Reverend David Adam in his book, The Rhythm of Life. We use one of the day's Bible readings and a reflection on the reading. And on a Thursday, the overarching theme for our prayer is community. So we pray. Blessed are you, creator of all things, the heavens adore you. Let the whole earth worship you. Let all peoples proclaim you. Let all nations obey you. Let us serve you in love and in peace. Come, Lord, and rule. Come into our hearts and fill them with love. Come into our minds and fill them with peace. Come into our lives and fill them with light. Come into our days and fill them with glory. Come, Lord, and rule. And the psalm today is Psalm 145. Your faithful servants bless you. I will exalt you, O God, my King, and bless your name for ever and ever. Every day will I bless you and praise your name for ever and ever. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. There is no end to his greatness. One generation shall praise your works to another and shall declare your power. I will ponder the glorious splendour of your majesty and all your marvellous works. They shall speak of the might of your wondrous acts and I will tell of your greatness. They shall publish the remembrance of your great kindness. They shall sing of your righteous deeds. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great kindness. The Lord is loving to everyone and his compassion is over all his works. Your faithful servants bless you. And once again, we read from the book of Revelation and we've reached chapter 16 and verse 12. And we pick up in John's vision. The sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates and its water was dried up to prepare the way for the kings from the east. Then I saw three impure spirits that looked like frogs. They came out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. They are demonic spirits that perform signs and they go out to the kings of the whole world to gather them for the battle on the great day of God Almighty. Look, I come like a thief. Blessed is the one who stays awake and remains clothed, so as not to go naked and be shamefully exposed. Then they gathered the kings together at the place that in Hebrew is called Armageddon. The seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and out of the temple came a loud voice from the throne saying, It is done. Then there came flashes of lightning, rumblings, peals of thunder and a severe earthquake. No earthquake like it has ever occurred since mankind has been on earth. So tremendous was the quake. The great city split into three parts and the cities of the nations collapsed. God remembered Babylon the great and gave her the cup filled with the wine of the fury of his wrath. Every island fled away and the mountains could not be found. From the sky, huge hailstones, each weighing about 40 kilograms, fell on people. And they cursed God on account of the plague of hail because the plague was so terrible. Another challenging passage, so let me read a reflection, and this week they're written by the priest and poet Malcolm Geit, and he says this. Once more we find the nightmare imagery of this dark chapter performing a double function. On the one hand, it's a coded account of the powers at work in John's world and his anticipation of their brief triumph and inevitable demise. On the other hand, they are symbols that still work in our minds and may help us to discern and unveil some truth about the powers that work in our own world. The dragon, the beast and the false prophet, triple and mutually enfolded powers that work in John's world, represent respectively Satan, the dragon, suborning and empowering Rome, the beast, organising the state religion of emperor worship, the false prophet. From the mouth of each of these comes a foul spirit, Numa. Numa also means breath, and sometimes by implication word, the speech that is born on the breath. These frog-like Numa are the constant empty croaking, the noxious flatulence of state-sponsored propaganda. That much is clear for John, but what about us? The dragon, the beast and the false prophet in our age might well be corrupted and self-serving forms of spirituality, corrupted statecraft and corruption in organised religion. In John's world, these three corruptions infected one another and worked together, and they sometimes 
do the same in ours. A prosperity gospel, a self-serving politician and a complacent church might all seem to be singing from the same hymn sheet. Again, challenging words and challenging interpretation. Then we turn to prayer, beginning with the collect for this week. God the Father, help us to hear the call of Christ the King and to follow in his service whose kingdom has no end. For he reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, one glory. Amen. And we continue in prayer. That the church may show its unity in Christ. That all churches may work together for the benefit of all peoples. That all movements towards unity may prosper. That divisions and conflicts may cease. That the world may find lasting peace. That none may hunger or thirst. Lord, graciously hear us. That the barriers that divide may be broken down. That we may live in unity, peace and concord. That we may come to mutual understanding and care. Lord, graciously hear us. And on this day of the week, when the focus for prayer is community, we take time to pray for the community of Purton and the particular streets which are our focus of prayer this week. Loving God, we do thank you for the community of Purton, for all who live here and all who work here, all who serve the community in myriad ways. We pray for residents of all ages, from the youngest to the oldest, those in toddler groups, nurseries and preschool groups, those in our three school communities and all who work in them the residents of Courses Court Retirement Complex and Purton Manor Nursing Home, and those of all ages in between. We pray for our PCSOs and our local councillors, for those who work at the two doctor's surgeries, the pharmacy and dentists, for community leaders, church leaders, those who work in the library, shops and pubs, for all who help create our community, who volunteer and help others. And this week we pray especially for the residents of Cheriton Grove, Roughton Avenue, Paxton Avenue and Foster Green, asking for your blessing, peace and protection for those who live in each home. May they know they are loved by you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And so we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. God be in my head and in my understanding. God be in my eyes and in my looking. God be in my mouth and in my speaking. God be in my heart and in my thinking. God be at my end and at my departing. Lord, be with us to guide us, within us to strengthen us, without us to protect us, above us to raise us, beneath us to uphold us, before us to lead us, behind us to guide us, ever about us this day and evermore. Amen. Well, thank you for joining me for prayer today. I do hope the rest of your Thursday is good. And if you're able to, you'll be back here tomorrow at 9.45 for prayers. So until then, take care and God bless. Bye for now.